Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The peaceful death of Queen Victoria's doctor. When Queen Victoria lay on her deathbed, the greatest medical minds in Britain were beside her, along with her family members and also priests. At Osborne House, inside of her bedroom, the incredibly long reigning queen would die slipping away during a severe bout of illness, where she suffered from a number of strokes. Her doctor was intimidated by the Queen to admit to her that her death was on the horizon and the royal family could not deal with the fact that the Queen was dying. Many of her friends and former acquaintances had succumbed to their fate before the Queen would and one of the most loyal doctors throughout her life was Sir William Jenner, a man who made significant advancements throughout the Victorian period but he would die shortly before the Queen, and he was a man who was in charge of the Queen's health for some time. But what is the story of the death of Victoria's doctor? William Jenner was born in Chatham on the 30th of January 1815, and he was the fourth son of an innkeeper. His education in medicine began at University College in London, and he apprenticed to become a surgeon in London also. But following qualifying at the age of 22, he then started to practice to become a surgeon and he worked for the Royal Maternity Charity in Finsbury Square. He continued to study and continued to this throughout his medical profession before he became a consultant. But he was very well respected across Britain and in 1850 he published a book named On the Identity or Non-Identity of Typhoid and Typhus Fever. He had studied the fever for two years and he established the different identity of the fevers and he was the first one to do this, but his work had led to the appointment as a professor of pathology autonomy at the University College and he then became assistant physician to University College Hospital. Over the next few decades he became a full physician, professor of medicine and he would become in charge of the skin department. He also worked at the hospital for sick children and then London Fever Hospital and his work would inspire people all across Europe. But in 1861, William Jenner became appointed the physician extraordinary to Queen Victoria and he then became a constant feature of the royal household and court. He would not just attend on Victoria but he would also help the other members of the family. It was clear that the Prince Consort Albert was a very sick man and it was believed when he came to Britain his health was in very poor state and was in decline. However, Jenner would be involved in treating him. Prince Albert, for a long time, it's believed, died from typhoid fever. But later, historians have considered that Albert may have actually had Crohn's disease rather than typhoid. It was Jenner who spoke with the Queen during her husband's illness, and during his death, he then tried to treat him as best he could but Prince Albert would succumb to his health issues. Dr Jenner was also present when the Prince of Wales, Victoria's son and heir, would be struck with typhoid fever and there was no other person who was better than Jenner to deal with this. He was looking after the most important people in Britain and he was then made a baronet in 1868 and was given full accolades. He was also celebrated in Europe and was made a commander of the Belgian Order of Leopold. Jenner was also celebrated not just by royalty but within his field of medicine. He was made the president of the Epidemiological Society and Pathological Society and he then became the president of the Royal College of Physicians. His term in office overseeing the board saw a number of significant developments in society including passing the public health acts and establishments of boards who would pledge to make life better and healthier for those living inside towns and cities. He also witnessed the passing of the Medical Act of 1886. But when he was just at the height of his powers, he was the most senior doctor in the profession and he was a person who many turned to, including royalty. He would regularly visit the Queen and tend to her when he was needed, and his role inside of the royal household did not come to an end. He was also a teacher, and throughout his career he had become a specialist in the heart, abdomen and skin, and was also rather experienced in dealing with disease and illnesses such as fevers, tuberculosis, diphtheria and emphysema. But he was seen as a general physician who could be called to deal with anything, 
and he could diagnose any issue and treat it with a wide variety of ailments and medicines from different fields. He would observe patients thoroughly, but he was not keen on laboratory testing, and he did not always follow up, and he would always refuse to carry out post-mortems at times, Jenna said. The great aim of the physician is to prevent disease, failing that to cure, failing that to alleviate suffering and prolong life. He would continue to impart his knowledge onto students, and he continued to write books, but Jenner was known for being rather curt and direct with his speech, and his first court appointment shocked many because he would not hide his words. But Queen Victoria respected him, and he was a man who would tell her things straight and would not be intimidated by the Queen, unlike other doctors were that came after him. He was brutally honest, but his capacity for working very hard meant he amassed a huge fortune at the time, and he would not spend much money. He kept himself busy and would spend his free time reading novels. He did not drink neither, did he smoke, but he drank a huge amount of tea. In 1889, William Jenner retired, and he would still keep in contact with the royal family, and he lived in Hampshire, but on the 11th of December 1898, Nine years after his retirement, Sir William Jenner died inside of his home. News of his death went around the world, but following his death there were a number of post-mortem photographs which showed him on his deathbed. This was a practice that became popular, and these images were often taken within an hour of the death of the deceased, and they often became displayed prominently in the home. They were supposed to capture the last sleep, or an individual, but the image of Jenna shows him in his last sleep pose. His bed was pushed into the centre of the room to allow the photographer to position themselves in front of a curtained window. Rather than being shown in a coffin and surrounded by flowers, it's probable that the photo of Jenna was taken by a relative rather than a professional. Doctors played an important role in Victorian society, ensuring that people had good health and if Jenna, the most senior doctor across England, was photographed peacefully as he was, it sent a clear message to the people around Britain about public health. It showed Jenna had a good life also, and he was surrounded by his friends and family when he passed. But Sir William Jenner was a man who became the most respected and senior doctor inside of Victorian England. He was a man who was rather direct, and he would not hide his true feelings, and was not afraid to tell royalty of their ill health. Within three years of Jenna's death, Queen Victoria would also die, and in her final moments things were not calm at all. She was surrounded by her family, and many of them could not accept that Victoria was dying, and they did not even believe she was very ill. The doctors that surrounded the Queen were worried about the realism of her situation, and they were concerned that people were not taking it seriously. However, William Jenner, if he would have been there, would have ensured that the royal family knew what was happening, with the death of Queen Victoria on the horizon. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.